Welcome into the fifth down week. One of the high school football season is near completion and tonight our game of the week took us across the Michigan border into Wisconsin for the annual M&M &M game between Menominee and Marinette. It's one of the oldest rivalries in our region. This being the 117th time that these two teams have met head to head. A lightning delay had this one start nearly an hour late, so we only have first half highlights for you. Marinette's defense playing strong early. Duncan Jackson going to intercept the pass, which will give the Marines early momentum, but they couldn't capitalize on the turnover. However, the Menominee's offense going to get going. Trevor Terakoff under center. He's going to find a wide open Eli Beal, who takes it down to about the 11 yard line. And then shortly after that, the Maroons will cap off their drive with this run by Terakoff to make it 6-0 Maroons. We're going to jump now to the second quarter. Terakoff again making plays, rolling to his left. He'll throw an absolute dime to Beal for the touchdown. Menominee led 18-0 going into the half, and this game is currently late in the third quarter with a score 26-0 Maroons. We're going to have more on the Sports Zone next Thursday night. We go now to Escanaba. The Eskimos play host to Calumet. We're going to pick it up in the third quarter. Uh, Moe's leading 19-7 and looking for more. Nolan Bink with the handoff to Ben Johnson. Johnson knows how to carry the rock. He's into the end zone for six. Escanaba leads 25-7. Bink and Johnson would link up again later in the third quarter. Beautiful pass here by Bink. As Johnson is going to get behind the Calumet defense. That's a 52-yard pass and catch for the Eskimos, and they go up 31-7. And then how about Ben Johnson? He was the best player on the field tonight in this one. Here he powers through a couple of tackles, makes a couple nice cuts, and he's into the end zone again. This one was all Eskimos. They go on to win it 40 to 13. We're going to move on to Gladstone. The Braves taking on Marquette. No score in the first quarter. The Braves knocking on the door, but some good defense by Marquette. Kyler Sager with the interception in the end zone to keep things scoreless. Later, Young in the Braves on the attack on fourth down. Young sees a lot of pressure. But he's going to dump it off to Austin Salas, who's going to do the rest. Braves go up 16 to nothing. Then it's going to be Young calling his own number. He's going to take the snap, and he's going to take it towards the sidelines, trying to get the edge, and he will do that. He gets just inside the pylon for the score. That would make it 22 nothing Braves, and the Braves would go on to win this one 26 to 7. It was a good game, good way to start the year. You know, we played physical, we played uh, our style of football, so it's definitely a good way to start. Yeah, they, they had some big kids that uh, they beat me up pretty good, but uh, they held up pretty good. Let's go now to Westwood for the start of the Marcus Tucker era. The Patriots welcoming back or welcoming in Bark River Harris. The Broncos got off to a fast start. They drove down the field with their first possession and capped it off with this five yard run by Christian Spear. Then on fourth down, or that was on fourth down to put the Broncos up 8 0 after a successful two point conversion. In the second quarter now, Barker Harris back in the red zone again. It's Spear slicing through the middle of the Patriots defense for a second score of the game. That would make it 16 0 Broncos. Then Westwood will get on the board a few minutes later as Carter Scherer takes the quick pitch and he's to the edge and into the end zone, standing up to make it 16 8 Broncos. Then Barker Harris going to put together another long drive, ending with the most exciting play in football the one yard touchdown run for the touchdown. Troy Johnson and putting Bar Barker over Harris back up by two scores. Then with just over a minute remaining in the half, big play here, Ethan Marta with a deep pass to Trenton Wash. Now as Wash makes the catch and comes down, Ethan Ives is going to rip the ball loose for the interception. Barker over Harris tops Westwood 50 to 14. A few more scores for you. Kingsford tops Green Bay East 35 to nothing. And Sault Ste. Marie defeats St. Clair Shores 49 to nothing. We're going to move over to the eight-man league, making a stop in Munising. The Mustangs taking on Rudyard. No score. That is until Cam Peterson throws a frozen rope to Eli Sprague. He is gone. It's 8-0 Bulldogs. Second quarter, Rudyard building a lead. Peterson with the quarterback keeper. He's going to plow his way into the end zone and make it 21-0 Rudyard. Then it's Peterson handing the ball off to Aiden Bickle. Bickle is able to get to the sidelines and use his speed, which is too much for the Mustangs defenders to put the Bulldogs up 28 to nothing. Rudyard going to run away with this one by a score of 47 to 6. And finally, a few more eight man scores for you. North Central looking like they haven't missed a beat despite losing a lot of production from last season. They win big 54 to nothing. And then Cedarville with a big win over Superior Central 40 to nothing. And then finally, Forest Park with a huge win over Stevenson 60 to nothing.